Hello, my name is Arthur, and in the last video we got um, our save as file chooser dialog working and pretty much have that application at a point where it can show some windows. So this is my experimental application again, the one that I do my work on and figure things out in. and. This is where we're going to try to end up by the end of this video and things are going to get a little bit more confusing now. So we'll just have a look at what we're shooting for here. Is we have the create new document. Right now the first document that opens is called untitled. Now you might notice there's a backslash in here. That's because of um the way that I'm sorting out the difference between an address and and a label title so the file name so right now I'm stuck where I'm figuring out how to cope with a backslash um, I don't quite have that figured out yet but it won't take long so new tab is the same way if the backslash isn't here it can't find the title right now so I got to figure that part out. What I have going on is a maximum of 10 tabs can be open. So we're at the maximum. It can't open any more tabs from here. If we were to take one of the middle tabs and put this buffer has been modified. So now we have one tab that shouldn't just close it should be um well what should happen is a dialogue should pop up um asking are you sure you want to close this it isn't saved but i don't have that dialogue in place so in lieu of that what i have it um able to do is to open the save as dialogue so i've just kind of diverted it to a different dialogue that's already available just to get the functionality in place. So right now that's one, two, three, four. That's um, what would be called in GDK, this is one, two, zero, one, two, three. So this is tab number four. So tab number four needs to be saved we're going to delete the other tabs so we're at tab number four we try to delete it it opens up the save as dialog because it's now able to recognize and keep track of um this tab regardless of what its number is because this tab's number was four now its number is zero so that's one of the tricks is to keep the tabs having um, a pointer to where we can get at the buffer and have that pointer be in the correct index for its tab number. So well, I won't actually be able to do anything to close this tab now it's stuck open because we have no ability to save so that's kind of the target area of where we're getting to and it's going to involve some fairly substantial changes um it's going to involve changing add tab the order of the functions isn't good unless unless we were to just to simplify and to declare all of our functions and um, that's always an option but it's probably easier to avoid doing that because in the end the the file should end up more readable and and like the it makes you sort of have a more of a flow to to the to the script to organize them into the right order that they don't need to be declared so if we need to declare things we're doing things a little out of order so what we need is we need to change the way that certain things exist here because right now the only thing we're able to send a pointer to is the scroll window when we click on the tab button 
So we need to change that so we can easily access things like the text views buffer. We need to easily be able to access a label and we need a place to put the file address, which I'm using a label to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, define a new structure. And that structure is going to be components of, of a page that we need easy access to. <clears throat> so we'll do that. And let's just clear some space here. The script's likely to get a little messy in appearance at this point. Um, yeah, we should have the, the disclaimer and reminder that I'm less than a month and a half into C and into GDK. So the things that I'm doing should get taken with a grain of salt. So we'll define a structure and what's going to be in this structure is a GDK GDK widget. So this instead of declaring these things down in add tab, we're going to declare them in this in this structure. So this will be the text which text just as a reminder, is the label that goes onto the tab. We're going to add a new label to the tab, and it's going to be hidden, like it's a label that we won't see. So its purpose is just to hold, hold um, some text. And this might not be the best way to go about it, but it's the way that that I found that does work and I'm a, if it works use it sort of person so I'm going to short form address a little bit there to cut down on the wordiness the next thing we need as a definite is the GDK text buffer because that's where everything happens in the text view um, let's short form on this one too and just call it buff or buffer so we'll do a little bit of abbreviating and hopefully keep the names clear enough now this one I've have in place but as yet I haven't used it so this is one that I've just put there but I'm not really sure that it's actually going to be needed it's entirely possible that I can just compare the difference, look for a difference between the text label and the address label to be able to determine it was saved and not need a boolean for that at all. But I did put it there just in case I need it. So we'll call this structure page ID. And again, I'm going to short form that to cut down on being overly wordy so I limited the size of of my notebook to 10 pages so we're going to declare that constant in size equals 10 and yeah technically I'd imagine that we should be making it so that it can have whatever number of pages. <clears throat> but that would require me to know more about um, memory allocation than I actually know. So hopefully doing it this way, I'm not going to cause a situation where I'm showing people how to gush memory and cause memory leaks. So that's our structure. We've declared um, the size and we've declared the book, which is going to be the, that's the book that's going to hold the pages of the notebook. So it's what's going to hold this structure. So 
here at close window because we're going to be allocating memory for this we want to call to free the memory before the program closes so we'll free that up then down in main will allocate the memory. So let's just um, make a little more space here. And I am, I do have some footnotes for some of these that I'm following. So yeah, weren't book equals page ID Malik size of page ID multiplied by size the maximum size of our book and then we're going to add one to that because we always are going to need an empty an empty index and that's to organize <clears throat> that's to organize the book because our book has to follow the same behavior as the page numbers so if I delete page number three, page number four becomes page number three. And we have to be able to do that with our book so that it mimics the same behavior. When I delete index number three, I need index number four, five, and six to fall down into their proper index slots. And that way we keep a proper reference um, to the book tabs to the tabs in the notebook are going to be mimicked by the book references <clears throat> so the next part is some big changes to to the add tab so text view is okay we might want to move it to organize things more sensibly um and we might yeah we'll probably want to move that to organize things more straightforward some things we're going to need now is when we add a tab we're going to need to know um We're going to need to know what page number we're on. So what page number we're adding. So we'll go int page num equals GDK notebook. Um, get n pages. So that'll get us the number of pages currently active in the notebook. So we're GDK notebook, notebook, another bracket to close that up. Now we want to do a check that we're not exceeding the size of our allocated memory. So we've allocated 10 slots according to size. So if page num and let's bracket that properly. If page num oh good grief is equal to size 
then we can't add a new tab so we would return so that would just send us back um somewhere like this would probably be another another instance of a pop-up dialogue or or figure out how to allocate memory better and and to, but I'm not quite there yet so we're just going to use the cap size for now so let's see we're going to reorganize things now we have the text view Okay, so the box stays the way that it is, and if we remember, we called the box label. So we'll put that first. There's no change in the button and the button icon, so we'll put those second. And I probably should have cut that out. So that's the button. Oops, I did something wrong there. Let's see, we have button. We need icon in there too. So we'll get icon and then we'll delete those out. Okay, so that gets the box, the button, and the tool tip. Also would go here. So that leaves us replacing text. So how that will work is book at index page number dot text equals gdk label new so we have it doing name right now but what this is going to receive for a name is actually an address so we're going to want to change this so we're going to need a function um, this function is the reason that I have to put um, a backslash in front of all names right now. Um, yeah, I would been going through the going through the documentation for the string library, and it was the one that I could get to do what I need it to do. So let's. Um, address to file name that's a little wordy but then we'll send this a char let me space that right we'll call it like that so that one is 
actually, let's call this a little shorter name from address. So we'll start with the address. Let's do this right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an address for the last instance of a backslash. And this is the reason that a backslash is, um, is has to be a part of a name. And yeah, I'm not sure if it'll stay that way, but it does work. So that's sort of where I'm going with. So we have a constant char that equals a slash and then all we have to do is return and this function it will find the last instance of a backslash slash and return from there forward in the string So we have the address, comma, and we ought to give this a name, otherwise that's not going to mean very much, comma, that. So that will make it so that we can strip away an address from a file name and yeah I've got to figure out how to do this a little bit more extensively because um, it's entirely possible that that I might need to strip the file name away from the address also so that'll take me a little bit more learning exactly what I'm doing so now we're going to change this instead of just using name we're going to go with um, name from address so we'll do the function call right here we'll pass it name and yeah, we should prob this should probably get changed to address. But well actually let's do that. So we'll do it like that. We'll do it like this. Copy that. Paste this into here. Try not to be too confusing that way. So that should get us our name then we'll set in the address so book add index page number dot um i wonder if that's going to cause an overlap maybe that wasn't a good idea to do this Here, let's use the full word in these functions. So we're going to call this address the full word. The full word and the full word. Because we have a struct member with that name, we don't want to get overlapping. And that just will copy this out. And this one will just give the address. So that has the file name and the address in it. And then the last one is the buffer.
So that would be book at page num dot buff equals GDK um text you text you GDK text view that's got an underscore text view get buffer GDK text view text view so that should get the text buffer in place now we've changed what we're going to be packing so let's bring this up a little bit so we're not being too liberal with the white space I'm just trying to set it aside so that the differences can be sort of seen so the difference in the packing boxes is just identifying things differently so how we identify the text is like this right here we want to pack the text in so we'll copy that and paste it we'll need a second copy of this so we'll copy that and we'll paste it except this time we're doing address So this one's going to be hidden. Okay, from there down. There's not much difference up until it comes to show. So at this point, we want to show the button. And again, we'll put in a space here for the changes. Then we'll show the text. So now we're showing just the button and just the text. And text is the label that holds the file name, but not the address. So we'll paste that in there. Okay. So that should all be good. Hopefully we don't have too many typos. So that leaves us changing close tab. So in close tab, and what well, we'll also have to be changing the orders of things. So we have to move where the save file dialog is because closing a tab may need to call the save file dialog. So let's see, um, we get the page number and then we need the number of pages. So let's just move this down because we will need that statement, just not there. So int, we'll call this limit because we're going to iterate through the number of pages to fix the book after we remove a tab. So limit is GDK notebook get n pages and 
we actually have that written out right here so let's just grab the end of that save on some of the typing time so we use that limit and I'll try to explain that when we get to it so now we want to check if the tabs buffer has not been modified then we can just remove the page so if not um, GD, GDK text buffer text buffer get modified and we can just call this like this sometimes I'm writing this GDK notebook in but it actually doesn't always need to be there and I'm not actually also clear on when exactly it does need to be there so this would be page num fortunately the page numbers begin at zero um, page num dot buff so because they start at zero they naturally fit into into the kind of array that we're using here and that's the close bracket so if it has not been modified then we can delete it So that's that part then once we delete it we have to fix the book so we're going to need an int to loop through a for loop so we'll go int i we don't need anything too descriptive here for i equals page number because that's the page number we're starting at for i equals page num while i is less than limit now when it returns the number of pages it counts zero so that corrects for a one-off as far as i can tell um, everything seems to have worked in every test that i've run but sometimes I find out later oh it was one off and or something was not quite the way that I thought it should be so here what we're going to do is we're going to um, slide each reference in the book back one slot starting from page num so we're going to take and change the one we just deleted which this is now an empty slot is going to equal book i plus one and it will do that until it hits the limit and at the limit it's going to find an empty slot and that's why the plus one on 10 pages so you can open 10 pages and then there's one empty slot because if you delete page number eight you need that empty slot to be falling down to to end up with an empty slot at the end of the array so hopefully that's explained clear enough um, else and at this point we're just going to toss it over to the save dialog 
So we'll toss it over to the Save As dialog. But where it should be going is to um, to a more straightforward dialogue of, oh, you're closing something that's unsaved. Do you want to save it or not? That dialogue, which I don't know what that's called, but that's the dialogue that should pop up at this point, not save as. Okay. Um... Let's see. Now, the other thing is we're calling the Save As dialog here. And the Save As dialog is way down here. So, Open File dialog being beneath Add Tab is where it should be. But when you're saving something, um, that's happening after after add tab and because scripts read up from main it's more appropriate for for save as to be above all of these other things so this would seem to be the more appropriate place to put that so we're going to save that let's see what one do i have open here um that is a window in the wrong place and that's all good so we'll attempt to compile this let's let's drop this down to make sure i saved it hate that i forgot to save it sometimes and and it compiles and i'm all excited oh look no mistakes so that's pretty substantial and that's kind of what I expect because um, doing something like this took an awful lot of an awful lot of changes in the script so let's see we start at 89 save file file address so we have an implicit declaration of save file I thought that I'd move that. I guess not. This should also be above. And that should be above the save as dialog. Probably close window is in the wrong place too. There comes a point when, when actually the easiest thing to do is to completely rewrite everything. Once the organization is sort of in my head, I find it that I learn a bit by doing that. Notebook. There's a typo there. So we have a notebook again. That's at 99. Oh, no it isn't. Undeclared. Somewhere around there. Um, 53. Nope, can't be there. Limit equals... So that's in here. Oh, there it is, a notebook. We'll save that one. Page num. A typo there somewhere in a page num. There it is. Okay, that should slim down on the mistakes 
see where that gets us. Oh goodness. All right, semicolon. Another notebook. At one twenty five. bit painful but not that bad considering that was a pretty pretty large overhaul so we don't have a name and what's going on there is it can't get it it can't find a name unless the name has a backslash in it so it just discarded everything because it never found a backslash when we um, changed address to name but if we put the slash well, actually, I'm not sure if that's back or forward slash. I keep calling it backslash, but I forget that which one is which repeatedly. Yeah, DuckDuckGo would be like, oh, are you looking that up again? <laughs> okay, so now we have names on our tabs let's see if things are still working it should cap out at 10 so it capped out at 10 let's go to some middle one and type buffer modified so we'll delete down until we get to that one it's going to call up the save file dialog because we don't have another dialog to call up and any of the other tabs we'll be able to delete we'll be able to add tabs still if we type in one of them delete some and just pick random ones to put some text in that way we can see that under the circumstances of changing numbers, we're still going to get the same response. So that one should be able to delete, that one should, this one should call up the file. So it's keeping all of the buffers are in order and we're easily able to access the text buffer and that's the important part and the reason for the for making a structure to hold that stuff rather than declaring it inside of the add tab it makes it easier to access the things that are inside of it so that's it for this video um, I'll actually have to sit down and look at this to figure out what exactly is next it's probably safe because this button right now is just going to do something wanky so yeah I'll have to sit down and figure out what changes are next to move into a direction from from where that is at to where something like this is so to get it more functioning like an actual text editor so again the disclaimer I've only been doing C and GDK for for less than a month and a half so that's the information that I have at this point and it should be taken you know as beginner level stuff and and not be considered as an authority on how to make a program in GDK or C and hopefully none of this is is splurting memory out everywhere or anything like that so hopefully it's not all leaky and everything is in order the way that it should be so I hope it was useful and until the next video take care